Let's talk now about another method for measuring the level of income inequality in society. This is actually one that many economists prefer to the Gini index because it can more realistically represent some of the challenges that exist when there is a large gap between the rich and poor in society. This is called the 2020 ratio. I'm going to make a little more room here and we'll define the 2020 ratio and then we'll look at our Lorenz curve diagram again and actually calculate it for our hypothetical country X. The 2020 ratio is really a simple concept. It's even much easier to calculate than the Gini coefficient. This is the ratio of the income earned by the top or richest 20% to the percentage of total income earned by the bottom or the poorest 20%. In other words, it tells us how much richer on average somebody in the top 20% is than somebody in the bottom 20% of the income ladder. That is a useful metric for comparing the level of income inequality in a country. Let's look back at our hypothetical country X. We can do this calculation. It's really easy to do. So let me demonstrate how we can do that here. Looking at our graph, we know that the richest 20% of income earners take home 40% of total income in country X. I know that because the point above the 80th percentile is right at the 60% level of total income, leaving 40%. So 40% of total income in the pockets of the richest 20% society. You'll also recall that the lowest 20% of income earners, that's these people down here, right here, take home just 5%. So 5% of total income. So the question is, how much richer is the typical person in the top 20% than the typical person in the bottom 20%? So we can find the 2020 ratio down here. So the 2020 ratio equals, as I explained here, how much income is earned by the top 20% over how much income is earned by the bottom 20%. That's a very simple calculation here. It's 40% divided by 5%. In my hypothetical country X, the 2020 ratio is 8. Okay. Now, what does that number tell us? How can we interpret different countries' 2020 ratios? Again, this is some very easy to find public data. In fact, we'll go have a quick look at some data for countries and interpret the 2020 ratios for different countries in the real world. For the sake of convenience, we're just going to use Wikipedia right now. I wouldn't normally recommend using Wikipedia if you want statistical validity. Rather use the World Bank or Google's Public Data Explorer, which taps many publicly available databases for income inequality data. However, this is a really useful way to look at it. What we have here is a table showing the income distribution data for every country in the world for which it is available. And what we're interested in is the RP 20% because that's what we just talked about, the ratio of the average income of the richest 20% to the poorest 20%. We're going to sort this data using the 20% column. And we can now scroll down to where the data is available. And we can see right here some of the most equal countries in the world, such as the Netherlands, Japan, Czech Republic, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Finland, and Hungary. These are countries in which the ratio of the average income of somebody in the top 20% is quite low relative to the ratio of the average person in the bottom 20%, as low as 2.5 in the Netherlands, up to around 3.8 in Finland and Hungary. This means that the average person in Finland, who is in the richest 20%, is only 3.8 times richer than the average person in Finland's lowest 20% of the income ladder. Let's look at a couple other countries here to compare. So I'm living in Switzerland. We can see that Switzerland is more unequal than Finland and the Netherlands. The average person in the top 20% is 5.5 times richer than the average person in the bottom 20%. Let's continue to scroll down. Look at some sub-Saharan African countries, perhaps. Malawi, we have Malawi here. The average person in the richest quintile is 6.7 times richer than the average person in the poorest quintile. And we have to keep going down to find the United States of America right there. You can tell right now that the United States is quite a bit more unequal than many European countries. 
the average rich American is 8.4 times richer than the average poor American. And keep in mind that this number tells us nothing about the degree of income inequality between the richest people in the top 20% and the least rich people in the top 20%. Of course, there are huge gaps even in the top quintile of American income earners. You can come look at this page yourself. I'll put a link in the description of this video so that you can come check it out. You get all the way down to the bottom and you can see some of the most unequal countries in the world. Look at Haiti. Look at Lesotho and Namibia. In Namibia, the average person in the richest quintile is 56 times richer than the average person in the poorest quintile. If we compare that to those Northern European countries we looked at earlier, it's quite a difference compared to Japan, for example, where the average rich person is only 3.4 times richer than the average person at the bottom of the income ladder. So in this lesson, we have introduced two different metrics or ways to quantify the level of income inequality in a nation. The important points to take away from this are that in regards to the Gini coefficient, the higher the Gini coefficient, the greater the level of inequality, because this represents a larger distance between the line of equality and a country's Lorenz curve. The 2020 ratio, we should probably take down some conclusions about that. The higher the ratio between the incomes of those in the top 20% and those in the bottom 20%, the greater the level of income inequality in society. The most equal countries in the world tend to have 2020 ratios of around three to four, which represents a highly equal society. Whereas the least equal countries in the world, the most unequal countries tend to have a ratio as high as 40 to 50 to even 60 in a few sub-Saharan African countries. Here we go.